What is up, everyone? My name is X, and we are back with a video today to talk about the current setup that we have to enable us to record multi-view video podcasts. So essentially, the inspiration behind this video is to show you guys what we do, how we set it up, and for you to incorporate our setup into potentially your setup, whether that's for podcast recording, that's for content creation, or that's just for videos or live streaming you want to do. I believe we have a unique or creative setup for accomplishing our goal, our goal of multi-view podcasting. And you could definitely take some of our techniques here and use it for yourself. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. So we're going to talk about the equipment you need because that's quite a lot of equipment we got in order to accomplish this goal of multi-view recording on a podcast. So the first thing you're going to need is a microphone because you need to capture audio for your subjects. And I actually have this microphone here that I usually have for my subjects. It is the Rode Pod Mic, a really good microphone, but relatively cheap compared to the expensive microphones you see out there. And we have a stand here as well to hold up the microphone. This is a key component you need to capture audio subjects. The next thing you'll need is a audio interface to capture the signals coming out of my mouth into this microphone that gets wired into the audio interface. So it, it gets captured on a computer and gets saved into a file slash recording. So we went with the Rodecaster Pro 2, which is actually more than an audio interface, but I'm saying audio interface because that's what you really need to capture audio from a microphone. But the Rodecaster Pro 2 is that absolute unit. I absolutely love this thing. This thing is an absolute beast. There's so much features jam packed into that device that I'm using right now to record this video. But you can actually use the Rodecaster Pro 2 standalone from like a computer. Uh, and all you really need is the microphone and the Rodecaster Pro 2. And these two things is all you need to get started recording the podcast. Um, but if you want to bring it to the multi-view, we use the Rodecaster Pro 2 to help us switch between videos because the Rodecaster Pro 2 has MIDI um, built in to this device. And we actually use that as a key component to help switch between the camera views when we're taking live video of our subjects. Um, we'll talk about more about that, how we set that up. But in our specific setup, the Rodecaster Pro 2 is a really important component to help us achieve that goal. But you can substitute the Rodecaster Pro 2 with a uh, regular audio interface and a device that has MIDI on it. But we'll talk a little bit about that more later. So the, the, the audio interface and the microphone and the, like the XLR cables in a stand, I guess, is all you really need to capture the audio aspect of the podcast. So what about the video aspect, right? That is actually gets a little bit more tricky. So when it comes to the video, you need multiple cameras, right? So we actually have here the Sony ZV-E10, and it's capable of shooting a 4K. And here at Infrared Labs, that was a key component for us because we wanted to capture 4K for our videos just in case. So we could capture 4K video and then crop in to uh, 1080p. So at least we get a really good uh, audio uh, video file um, for our recordings. Uh, so we have two of these ZV-E10s, and then our main camera that we use is a Sony um, Alpha 7 A4 camera that I'm using to record this video right now. And as I said earlier, we really wanted to capture video in 4K, um, which is a key component to us, as well as like producing a, a really high quality output file, video file for our, of our subjects. Um, the next thing you're gonna need is HDMI cables that can connect to those cameras because we need to take those cameras as inputs so you can switch between those camera inputs. Um, this is like standard stuff, actually. Uh, and the next thing, well, for just a side note, for the Sony ZV, this takes micro HDMI. I don't know if you can see that. It takes micro HDMI here. So you're going to have to get the micro HDMI adapter slash or HDMI cable with the regular HDMI endpoint that can hook up to your computer in some way or uh, camera input in some way. So the next thing you'll need is dummy batteries that plug into the, the wall so that when you're recording, you're not using your standard batteries that can die within a specified time frame. You want dummy batteries that you could plug in, that plug into a wall that will 
infinitely power your camera, or not infinitely, will power your camera based on the voltage that you connect to your wall. Um, you want this because you need your recording to last as long as possible. Dummy batteries is a very underrated but key necessity you need if you go this route of getting multiple cameras um, and you want them to last a really long time while you're recording. The second thing you'll need, or when it comes to the cameras, is stands. You need to be able to hold your cameras up at different angles within your air, your studio um, to capture that's focused on each individual subject or each zone where you have multiple subjects and where you want to highlight those those specific subjects. So the camera stands are definitely key parts of the recording. Um, so you can place your cameras in specific areas of your studio to capture your subject. So now you're wondering, I have all three cameras. How do I capture the input of each of these cameras and connect it to my computer? Because on my computer, I only have one HDMI slot. Here, we use a laptop and we have one HDMI slot. So how did we capture all three of these cameras? Well, we had to get more hardware. This included getting an HDMI capture card that has four HDMI inputs on there, and then also getting an external chassis to slot that capture card in there so our computer recognizes that capture card as separate inputs. So think of this external chassis as a, a USB hub, as you would think. So you plug it into your computer, you get more slots. That's the same thing we're doing, but with HDMI slots, to capture our individual cameras as inputs. So the two specific hardware devices that we got were the, what is it? The, let me, let me just, I just want to make sure I'm getting the naming correct here. The Black Magic Design Deck Link Quad HDMI recorder. That is the HDMI capture card that has the four HDMI inputs on there. And then we slotted this, we mounted this into the Sonnet Echo Express SE3 Thunderbolt 3 Edition. So this has three slot PCI card expansions built into this external chassis. And we're able to slot that HDMI capture card into the external chassis. So then when we plug in the external chassis into our laptop, it recognizes this external chassis and we're able to recognize those four individual inputs. Now, this actually gives us an advantage because we can control these four HDMI uh, camera inputs as separate inputs compared to, let's say, if you was to get a standalone HDMI switcher device that is all built in one unit, which does have its advantages, don't get me wrong, but that would actually show up as one input on your computer. So here at Infrared Labs, we we specifically made this decision to uh, get this external chassis because we wanted more control, more customization in our setup. Uh, so that's the advantage it gives us. And we can talk about the HDMI switcher um, later in this video, but this is extremely key if you want to have multiple angles and you have a laptop compared to if you was to build a PC that has PCI slots that's able to take an HDMI capture card um, this is a good alternative solution. If you don't have a PC and you have a laptop, you get an external chassis with multiple inputs where you can add the HDMI capture card. Now that is all you really need as far as the equipment to get started with a multi-view podcast or content creation, however you want to use this setup for. But there isn't a very important software that we need installed on a computer that helped us configure this. And that is OBS, which is open broadcasting software. And OBS is free, completely free, and actually pretty robust and very reliable from my personal experience utilizing OBS. So next, we're going to talk about setting up OBS with this equipment and actually doing the multi-view. I'm going to show you guys how to do the multi-view angle um, with the Rodecaster Pro. So without further ado, let's get right to that. So as you can see, we are at obsproject.com. And all you have to do is select whatever operator system you have, select it here, and this will bring you to the page to download it. I already have it download. And then you'll say map Apple Silicon, and then boom, it'll lead you, it'll download it for you here. I don't need it though, because I've already have it downloaded. And as you can see here, I'm already using it. I know this looks crazy, so ignore it for now. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to 
hit this button and you're gonna create a scene. And I've already created the scene. I've called it demo here for purposes. And when I click it, I've actually mapped, created two devices within this scene under sources here. And I've added my camera here and my microphone here. Um, the reason I wanted to do this beforehand is because I would lose audio uh, if I make the scene and switch to that scene for this video because I'm using OBS to record this video. But as you can see, uh, just for demonstration demonstration purposes, if we were to demo this for the camera switch and you want, just add your camera device here. You go in plus video capture device and you would add your device here. Secondly, we need to get the MIDI plugin so that OBS can read MIDI input. And so what we're gonna do is visit a specific website, which is this. Oh, is it this? This is not it. Um, this is where I got to go to. This is it. And so we go really read this release page and boom. December 17th was the last time this was released. So we check here, assets. You can, you can actually read this information here, but what you really need is the uh, installer for, for the MIDI plugin. And essentially I have a Mac, in, uh, not Intel, I have a Silicon Mac, and so I would select this ARM64. But if you have whatever OS you have, make sure you select it here. And then once we do that, we go back to OBS and we're able to see a new option in our toolbar up top. Oh, tools, MIDI, MG, setup. So let me just, uh, let me just change this to this. I'm in the demo scene. So we go to tools. Oh, actually you can't even see my screen. That was bad. We go to tools. OBS MIDI MG setup. And as you can see here, we have a new window open. And these, all these are called bindings. So what I'll do is I'll actually delete this binding and then delete this binding. Actually, I'm gonna leave this. So I have a binding here already created for the computer view that I already set up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another binding to switch to that scene that I created, the demo scene. So we'll go to here, demo. And now, as you can see here, you can see here there's like numbers, et cetera. We selected an action to commit and then a scene to do it on. We're gonna do that here. So now we're gonna go here, scene switching, selected scene switching, and then we're gonna select demo which is the scene we created earlier. So then we just need to connect this binding to our MIDI input, where if we select this listen once, whenever we click the MIDI input, it's just gonna listen once and register it. But if we select listen listen continuous, every it's gonna constantly listen to the input we select. So we're just gonna, we already hit listen once, so we're just gonna hit, oh, which one is it? Is it this one? Yeah, we're gonna hit this MIDI input, make sure it's working. And I think we're good. So then we're, we're good to go, we're able to exit out. You can switch. Cool, and I'm switching between my computer view and my camera. Computer view, camera. And that is how we set up multiple cameras to do that. So we create multiple bindings in our setup we create multiple bindings where we do the same for the main camera, the side camera, and another side camera. And we actually have another split between like A and B. So they show up on the same scene. And yeah, that's exactly how you set up the MIDI mapping to switch between scenes that you map to your uh, camera inputs. Now, I'm just gonna show you uh, future me step-by-step step how to go into map the correct MIDI um, yeah, map the correct MIDI on your Rodecaster Pro, uh, etc. So you go into this gear icon here, and then you're going to go to Smart Pads here. And now you can see I've done it here already, but let's just say I go here. I did it here in the video, for example. Let's just say I go here, 
Then we go up to trigger MIDI. We're going to say momentary no latching. And boom, you create your MIDI. And then as I showed you in the video, once you click your MIDI and you cr create the binding, you have it configured and set up to connect with OBS. So that is all that we have for today's video. Let us know any questions, comments, concerns. Let us know how you can use this for your setup, whether that's for podcasting, content creation, or whatever you want to use it for, whether it's you're taking bits and pieces or literally uh, taking everything that we've set up here and use it for your setup. So without further ado, this is X signing off from Infrared Labs, and I hope to see you guys soon. Peace.